Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to episode 10 of my series, Behind the Raw, where I take you on behind the scenes, talk you through in regards to my workflow, my editing, and my thoughts about particular image. Now, this week, it's the turn of a shot that I tried to replicate when I had visited the Dingle Peninsula with all the guys back in September. So if you're new to the channel, last September I had a lot of visitors come to Ireland and one of those visitors was my good friend Michael Shane Bloom and he reached out to me that he wanted to come and I was delighted to show him around. But we went to an area which I love to go to which is Dingle and we were on the, uh, the strand called Clotter Strand. Now, we had some incredible wave action on that day, and he managed to bag a shot, which was one of his favorite shots of 2023. It was also one of my favorite shots of 2023, even though I didn't take it. But while I was in Dingle, I had similar conditions. The waves were big, but they weren't as big as what we had when the guys were over. But I decided that I would set myself a challenge. Now, I do seem to like to set myself challenges, but this challenge was to try and replicate a shot that might Michael would have gotten back in September of 2023. No mean feat because, number one, Michael is an incredibly talented photographer and I'm honoured that I had to spend the time with him because it still resonates with me today, his thought process about photography. But number two, the shot that he took was a brief moment in time. So he managed to capture a shot of a wave breaking that replicated the shape of the stack that it was breaking against. So for me, I would get a lot of waves, but I knew that I would not get the exact same wave. And that's what I love about seascape photography is that no two waves are ever the same. But nonetheless, I knew I'd get something close enough. After taking a number of different shots, I finally bagged one that I was happy with. And I'm going to take you over now onto my Lightroom here, and I'm going to talk you through how I edit the image. So let's go. Okay, so here we are over on the computer. I'm in Lightroom right now, and here's the image that I settled on. I took many images during this in my effort to try and replicate the image from uh, Michael Shamblum. But I do think that with this uh, wave, it actually worked out quite well. And it was very similar to Michael's. I know that Michael's had more of a curve in it, but still at the same point, the intent that I wanted to do worked out pretty closely. Now, looking at the settings here, as you can see, very, very fast shutter speed. So one five thousand of a second, I was at f4 and my ISO was at 160 and I was shooting at 200 mil. And one of the things you'll notice with this is that I'm pretty far out from my finished image. Now, I was using my 70 to 200. Michael had a uh, 100 to 400, and I believe he took his shot close on 400 mil. Now, I could have utilized, again, my 150 to 600 Sigma, but I had my 70 to 200 here when I decided to do this, and I said, okay, you know what? I can crop in afterwards. And with this image as well, I was a bit concerned that by cropping in, I'm going to lose quite a lot of the detail and the data, but in reality, I didn't end up losing much of it. So from this image, again, looking and talking about Michael's image, what was really nice was that you couldn't really see the background here. So I'm going to play around in that one when I get to the edit of it. And moreover, with the shape that you have of the water here as it's coming up and uh, hitting against uh, this rock. Now, one difference as well was that on Michael's image, he had quite a lot more water all around here in this area. I didn't have that, obviously, because the conditions were different. But nonetheless, it was still a nice shot, and I was still happy to be able to play around in this playground. And I can go back there any time, I think, which is the benefit of having this pretty much close enough to my doorstep. So starting off, my usual process again is I'm going to go in and look at my horizon to be straight, but on this occasion, I'm going to look at my crop. So I am going to heavily crop this image. I want to really come in close to it, and also I want to get rid of these rocks that are over here, so I can just make it a small, little bit bigger here. And now what I'm doing is filling effectively the frame. Now I might look here and say, okay, do I want to take that out after in um, post with spot removal? But for the most part, I think from the image here, I want to go along this line. I'm going to make, make sure actually, just bring it slightly up actually, so I can have it more centered. And I think that's actually better. Yeah, I am losing this small little curve of a wave over here, but that's incidental because the main star of the show for me is this main rock and wave. So that is the first thing that I'm going to do on that. The next thing I'm going to do is 
pretty much go down the route of my standard uh, editing process because with my standard editing process there's a number of things that I want to try and achieve but the main thing I want to do is to bring out the drama within the image. So from a white balance point of view I don't need to change that at all. From the highlights I want to bring those uh, up but I also want to see do I need to change my exposure. So I'm going to just slightly brighten the image. We'll play with this later when it comes to using my uh, masks because I want to have most of the detail in here and if I look at this rock you see all of this water that's cascading down off the top of the rock and then you've got all of this detail in this wave so I want to make that as bright as possible in the frame so there I'm looking at my exposure and just slightly increasing that I want to add tiny tiny bit of contrast not a lot um, just to be able to have the difference between the dark and the white on the highlights point of view if I play with these if I bring them down here you know it it works but it doesn't really add much to the image I want to make it as vibrant as possible so I'm going to increase my highlights even though the image is bright it look here these areas are going to tell me that they're overexposed but I'm not worried about those because this again is my star of the show if I look at my shadows I can bring my shadows down or I can bring my shadows up but if you look at the way I've got the image ex exposed there's not much happening when I do that difference on shadows but for them now I want to bring out as much detail I'm going to bring up my shadows probably around about maybe 82 whites I don't need to affect them they're perfectly fine if I go any further on my rights by the way you know they're all going to start losing uh, the detail which I don't want so I want to just leave the whites the way they are and from the blacks then I want to bring up these blacks so I want a bit more texture in these um, rock and again I can change this when it gets to what I'm going to do with my um, mask so I'm just going to increase theirs slightly now I do want to add in texture on this because this image to me is all about texture not only texture on this rock but also texture here on this wave so I'm going to add in some texture here I'm going to add in quite a lot actually I'm going to go pretty much up and you look at these rocks here you see that texture detail starting to come out from a clarity point of view slight little touch I don't think we need to give it much but a slight bit of a touch but now dehaze is going to remove this haze that we have in the image and that's where I think it's going to really pop and I mean looking at Michael's image I know that there was quite a lot of haze in the air and I liked his edit so I kind of want to replicate that I tried to replicate taking the shot I might as well try and replicate the edit as well so I'm going to really bring in here and now if you look by removing this dehaze all of that is gone you're starting to see the texture coming out on that in fact you know what I'm probably going to go a bit more I think I'll just go we we'll go spinal tap on the dehaze here. Now all of a sudden you start to see all of this texture coming out on these rocks. On a color point of view, yeah, I want to increase the vibrance. I want to bring out this in the background, even though it's going to be disappearing when I get to my final stage. So I'm going to increase my vibrance, probably not by 30, probably around about maybe 20, and just give it a small touch of saturation. Now if I look at that image here, I can say, okay, you know what? Yeah, it looks a bit crunchy so I'm going to say okay I want to be able to change that so I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, have a look and I'm going to take my um, mask and I'm going to go for a radial gradient and I want us to focus in on this entire area here so right now there's quite a lot going on even though if I just remove this for a moment even though you can, it's clear that the star of the show is this area, what I want to do is I want to bring more attention to it and I want to kind of darken down this background here. So I'm going to put my gradient around where I want it to be. I'm going to keep a bit on the outside because what that's going to do is add a bit of light that's fading off so it's not going to be as harsh. And then all I'm going to do on that is I'm going to reduce down my exposure. So if I reduce down my exposure it's bringing it down inside here. But if I now say okay hang on I want to change that because what I want to have is all of this on the outside of this mask. So now by inverting that and I bring my exposure down, you notice here all in the background has gone dark and now this image here is merely making punch and it's popping as well. So if I look here, going into L, actually just take this off, there you go. So now we can see that from the original image, we are now at that image. And I'll give you a look actually here at um, the before and after. So that's the before with the crop that's the after after adding in my edits and then the final thing I want to do is to go back in here and I want to go to my detail and then I want to check for noise there is noise because I've darkened down quite a lot but we'll have a look here and see what it says about um, is there is going to be noise to be removed there's actually quite 
a little amount, but then quite a lot when you start looking in these areas here on the darkness of the rock. So I just want to remove each of those. But when I look in the actual wave, normally what happens with denoise is that it will soften the entire image. This isn't softening it in any way, shape or form. Uh, so I'm going to click on that. That's going to do its business, probably take 30 or 40 seconds. But yeah, you get the idea of what I wanted to achieve with that image. And I'm happy actually that I did it. Of course, I was never going to get an exact same shot as Michael. Number one, because, you know, like I said in the video, he's a phenomenally talented photographer, far more talented than me. But it was a good thing to do to try and replicate and to be inspired you know, by others. So I suppose I was inspired to try and succeed from this, which was actually the episode of what I would have called it. But yeah, it was really interesting and great fun. And like I said, I'm lucky because I have that on my doorstep. So Michael, I hope I did the image uh, justice and you know, I hope you don't mind me using you as an example for inspiration for my own photography too. Perhaps actually who inspires you? Have you photographers that have pushed you to go and try and get an image? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to join me next week for next uh, Sunday for the final episode for my trip to Dingle when I got to meet up with two other photographers and we went to a location that was used in a film set back in the late 60s, 70s um, and we got some great shots there for sunset. So I'd love for you to join me on this coming Sunday. So thank you very much as always for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, schnongafo. Mm -hmm.